I'm Don Lindner with World at Work TV, and joining me today is Steve Aliseo from Johnson & Johnson and Steve Panaccio from Pfizer to discuss the CEO pay ratio. The Dodd-Frank Act requires most public companies to disclose the ratio of the total compensation of the CEO to the total compensation of the median employee. And there's been a lot of conversations and consternation around the amount of time, effort, and, uh, and funding it's going to take to do the ratio, and if there's any value at all to the investment community. But the reality is, when the SEC publishes the final rules, companies are going to have to comply. So what I'd like to talk about today is what does this mean to the compensation professional and the companies? So my first question is, why are companies saying this is so difficult, and is it really going to be that hard? Well, Don, we're all in compensation, and we're all very familiar with what a median is. So the idea that it's complex, that's just not true. We know what a median is. It's just gathering the data. Trying to calculate a median on data you don't have, that's the issue. It makes it really tough. And a lot of companies, like Johnson & Johnson, are very decentralized. And we just don't have the data available in a centralized source. I agree with Steve. One of the issues, though, I think the SEC and their proposed rules made it a little easier uh, by allowing you to use different methodologies as opposed to using the proxy analogy uh, or methodology to uh, determine who the median employee is. So it's not so complex. It's really more about being able to access the data. The calculation's easy if you have the data is what I'm hearing. So what can companies do now to prepare for that CEO pay ratio? Well, I think companies should start to look at their data to see if they can gather up data on salary, bonus, and long-term awards around the world. Uh, with the SEC rules, you might say, I have everyone's base salary, so I'll determine the median employee using base salary. And I take the total, take out the CEO, find the median, that person's base salary, and then go through the, the uh, exercise of the uh, proxy pay uh, calculation. But again, you need to dig into it you might not have centralized data or data for a third of your population in, in some parts of the world. Steve, you mentioned uh, in the beginning that when the proposed rules came out, they were a lot more flexible than we thought they might be because the legislation was pretty prescribed. What are some of the alternative ways that you can approach um, figuring out what the median employee is? And if one of you would tackle uh, sampling, um, being able to do sampling, and is that the silver bullet or the real solution to this for most companies? First, let's start with sampling. Uh, I'm pretty good in math. Uh, I haven't figured out what they mean by sampling because, as I understand sampling, you need to have the entire population and then you stamp, sample from there. But if you're doing a median, as Steve mentioned, it's really finding the middle person. So if you have all the data, I don't know what sampling will do and I'm still waiting and hopefully the final rules will give more guidance. We've talked to a number of people and no one really understands what they were referring to. And Steve, um, I know you've done a lot of dry runs. You've really worked on this a lot. So where are you on the issue of sampling? Sampling is not the silver bullet. It's like saying, okay, great idea and concept. You're pulling balls randomly out of a bag. But like I said, if you don't have the data in that bag, then sampling doesn't help. How do you ask for data as a sample if you're gonna go out to one of your counterparts in human resources in a country and say, don't give me the whole data set, give me a sample. But you don't know anything about those people. So how do you do that? You say, okay, well, how about people with birthdays on these Mondays of the month or whatever it is? Or, you know, you're gonna get a sample. Why not just ask for the full data set? So you, it doesn't solve that data collection issue, which is an issue of you don't have the data centrally, and it's a matter of the shot clock, because the year ends and you gotta file a proxy, and you gotta calculate this within that time frame. And it's not like we can wait forever uh, and wait a few years until we get this all done. It, you really are time constrained. So sampling is not a silver bullet. Let me ask you each. Um, you've talked about what you can do and alternatives, but what are you? What have you two done, or your companies done, as far as approaching the ratio and determining that median employee? Which approach are you taking? Well, right now I've, we've done a couple of dry runs, uh, and and I was pleasantly surprised. We had data. It appears we have all the data. So I thought the simplest is to do base salary. Base salary is easy, uniform. You don't have to worry about special pay 
uh, policies in different countries. Using base salary, identify the median person, and then get into all the other details. But again, with the, with the numbers of employees large companies have, you have you know, differences of $10, $30, $100. So some people have looked at, do I do round into the nearest thousand to identify the median person? But again, that's some of the work we're doing. We're going to look and see about cash comp. But we'll wait until the final rules to make a decision. Yeah, we did a dry run. And first we went down the road of what would it take to be perfect? And that quickly became obvious it would be impossible. And then what could we do with the data we had on hand? We have data on about 70% of our population that we use as our normal planning tool, salary, bonus, long-term incentives. And we have data from finance on how many people we have. So we know who the median should be in terms of a number. And we just said, well, let's just count down from the top using the data we have. And we know that's a good estimate, a conservative estimate. And we think conservative is probably the way to go in terms of working with regulation. You know, you may be $1,000 low in estimating your median, but better to be too low from a regulatory standpoint, we think, than too high. And that gets us somewhere. And if we improve the data set over the years, we'll improve our estimate. Okay, we've talked about the calculation, how complex it is. Let's change the subject a little bit, and that's on communications. How are you planning to communicate the ratio once you've had it calculated and you have to publish it to shareholders, to your employees, handling questions with the media? Well, Don, that is really going to be a debate that we haven't had yet at J&J. &J. I'll give you my opinion. I think we should be doing it in a very simple way, disclosing the ratio as required, disclosing a summary of the assumptions and methodologies used, but not making a big deal of it. If this was a big deal, the compensation professionals all around the world and in the United States, we would have been doing this for years. But we don't think that this, you know, is how compensation is set. Any special challenges you're looking at with having to communicate this? And people normally talk about shareholders, but you, you got to think about your employees too and the perception, et cetera. Well, I, again, I, I agree with Steve. I, I think the communication will be whatever is defined in the final rules. We don't think this is a valuable tool for investors, for our employees, or for really anyone. What we're looking at doing is, again, we'll find the final rules, we'll look at the communications we need to do. Uh, any employee can easily calculate from the proxy, take the CEO's pay, divide it into their pay, and find out what that multiple is. So, and they realize in global companies, pay around the world varies dramatically. So it's likely that median employee might be in a country other than the United States. My final question is around, how do you think the ratio will potentially be used or misused by shareholders, proxy advisors, politicians, the media? The biggest fear is the union groups and the politicians. Uh, my personal view is that this proposal, which was added to Dodd-Frank uh, basically after hours without discussion and debate, was really a, a request of the unions. And the unions are doing it to embarrass the CEO. Uh, what I personally believe is that there is no real value in it. Uh, and I think that the press will get the headlines. I think the companies who are uh, with low paid workforces, their ratios are going to be so high, they're going to take the headlines. I think most major companies with a broad workforce, they're going to be in the middle and won't attract a lot of attention. It doesn't matter whether you're 250 or 350 when someone else is 1,000. I don't think so. We already get criticism as companies for CEO pay, and there's a lot of information to criticize companies. So what does this add to the debate? And that we don't know. Um, but I think there's a couple of things that could happen that might be unfortunate. One is if there's a ratio out there, it could be a lot more negative press. Again, we're used to that. But it could imply that there is a ratio that people or companies should have. And then what we've seen a little bit is the first, you know, inklings of, you know, perhaps legislation tying tax rates to the pay ratio or preferences for government contracting to this pay ratio. Um, and so it's the, what are the things that aren't intended or unanticipated? 
so that, 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 that's some of the points that I think we really don't know, but I think it's going to take up a lot of management and HR time uh, dealing with the press, dealing with, with some of these unanticipated issues. Thank you, Steve and Steve. I'm Don Lindner with World at Work TV.